Okay, my friends, this is the observer effect. And what is the observer effect in quantum mechanics? Well, it's, it is, what, what they're talking about here is when little particles go through openings in a barrier, they create what's called interference. That's what they call it. The most absurd thing about this phenomena is that it can only occur when no one is observing it. <laughs> Once you observe things, once an observer begins to watch the particles going through the opening, the obtained image changes dramatically. Well, it's not you're watching. They are sampling and taking bits out. It says if the observer in the experiment was not human. Instead, they used a tiny electron detector could spot the presence of passing electrons. I'm going to explain to you exactly why this changes it. They're sampling and taking energy out. That's why the energy changes. All right, just think about it this way. This tube here can only hold a certain amount of water. And at a certain pressure, it'd be going through here. And then coming out the other end, they would see that pressure would be the same as the pressure in the beginning. So what they did was they said, let's take a sample out right from here to make sure that pressure is right and see what happens. So that by, that's what they call looking at the pressure. So they look at it by taking some of it out. And then they say, oh, guess what? It changed the pressure down here. Duh! <laughs> you took something out here, obviously it changed it down here. The same way as their observer in the experiment was an electronic device that picked up so many electrons. Absolutely unbelievable. They don't understand this. Now we're going to talk about Don Lincoln because he's been the problem with my research going right along. So I'm going to try to be nice, but I find it very difficult. <laughs> now don't forget, this is Don Lincoln who we'll be talking about in a minute. And here's his fixed particle, and here's the point particle. And he's saying that these are the particles that they saw, the smallest particles they can find at these Hadron Collider. Now, here's, here's a summary. The extended particle is the black one, and it's fixed. It's a fixed size. It never changes. I agree. It may have a funny, I mean, a fuzzy edge around it. I also agree with that. Point-like particles are mathematical extractions with zero size. I'm not sure I agree with that, but they may have a very tiny size. Even zero size particles have extended field due to the field of, of the effect of the field surrounding them. I can agree with that, but something has to be surrounded to have a field, I would think. So, I agree this never changes whatsoever. This one can get big and glowy and big and small. And I have shown this over and over and over again and tried to talk to Don about this and he refuses to discuss it. And he's the one that discovered these particles and I backed him up. I says, yeah, you got the right particles, no question. Oh, no, no, there must be, there must be some mistake. You're an observer that we're not going to accept. So, not only the observer principle kicks in, everything I say makes no sense. <laughs> Everything he say is correct. So here's the observer pr principle in practice. Don Lincoln sees these and they're real. I see them and they don't mean anything. We actually found them. He's just drawing little doodles of them. All they found was trash. They picked through debris like you would smash something and sweep it all up and pick through it and say, Ooh, look, these are the tiniest things we can find. And I see them over and over again, so they must be an elementary particle. Correct, Don. However, I see them in their photonic state, which is their dipole nature, back to back, back to back. These, these, these two together they call gluons, because they glue together. Yes, absolutely they glue together, no question whatsoever. They're bar magnets. When you take two of them back to back, you have a photon. This is where the photons of light came from. That's the particle right there, that's this particle. And coming out the other end, Nothing changes. We have found what he was looking for, the muon and electron shower. And because I observed it, it's not real. <laughs> There's your observer effect. Okay, this just came out yesterday. Astrophysicists think they've found the mysterious source of high energy neutrinos. This is what I'm talking about. 20th of July, 2022. Well, what's the neutrinos? What are neutrinos? 
they're a type of particle similar to the electron belong to the lepton family of fundamental particles. Neutrinos are distinguished by a lack of charge and mass that's virtually non-existent. That's not true. They have a charge and they have a mass. It is very small. It's 0 .000545 electron, I mean uh, atomic mass units, as a pair. But neutrinos come in pairs. They don't come individual, ex except for what we did. We created sterile neutrinos and electron neutrino showers. That's what CERN wants to do. Not only can we do it, we can use them and focus them, and we can harvest them. Okay, once again, these are particles that Don Lincoln showed. These are his doodles, not mine. These are our actual physical experience experiments with material research using photons and absorbing the light as radiance and luminosity just exactly the way they use the muons and electron neutrinos to see in the huge experiments. Same exact technology, we use CMOS, no difference whatsoever. And because we are right on top of the event, using our CMOS, we see it in extreme detail because what are, what are we seeing? We are seeing a single slit. We're seeing explosive particle. I mean, look at, look at the increase in energy here. You see that? From here, it was almost dark. The only reason it really started to light up is because it started to get sucked into explosiveness. And that is a photonic explosion. All right, that photon exploded. It divided. It's, that is fission. This is fusion. Now, that is what Don Lincoln should be looking at. These are the exact same particles that he showed. No difference whatsoever, and they know about now. And they have found them in the trillion volt range, which is what I'm saying. If we can create trillions of volts right here and harvest it using this focusing device, Right here, it's a focusing device. And I went to the University of Geneva, and I told them they should be focusing. Their, they were just letting them go by and hoping something would hit each other. So they shut down for three years to make them focus. Whether or not because of what I said, I don't know. But I went to the University of Geneva. I showed them all this stuff. They were intrigued. And um, then the Large Hadron Collider shut down for three years. It just reopened, and they find in all the same particles I said, trillion volt particles. And if we can get trillions of volts here, and because of our design, we can harvest it. For them, they just crash, and they just see them in debris, but they see a high voltage, yes. But it's just trash. What are they going to do with trash? We can push this right into a harvester right here. Again, shown it, shown it, shown it, shown it, shown it, and then we'll continue to show it until somebody pays attention because this would change the world literally overnight. Everything here exists on the shelf today. Insane to let people like Don Lincoln force us into the dark ages. Okay, they set up a big network around the world to use smartphones to watch for cosmic ray muons. And what they're doing is they're looking out in space to find these trails. And the reason they're trails is because there's very little atmosphere out here. It's, it's, it's quite sparse. So the particles go through a longer distance before they collide enough to subside. That's why they're seeing muons come in. And the interesting thing is, they're just coming through the same day and night. So that's kind of interesting to me. But anyway, this is about the, the sensory efficiency of smartphones. Everybody knows about it now. All right, here's what they're talking about. This measurement of cosmic ray muons using cosmic ray observatories and smartphones. Now, what are they looking for? Cosmic ray muon candidate events are detected as long, straight tracks passing through multiple pixels. So in the camera, they're seeing little white streaks. Now, again, we're out way out here. Particles coming through space are light and dust and everything. 
it's, it's called bow shock. We're hitting it and it's wrapping around us. And as we scrub through it, it creates our magnetic field. As we spin through these magnetic particles, that's what a magnetic field is created by. And it's extremely hot out here, 2,700 degrees at the scrub. And then it gets cold and then it gets warmer again at the surface. Not 2,700 degrees. Out here is where we have the extreme scrub. Now, we also have these muons. Now, they're being created the same amount here as on the other side of the Earth. That struck me as a, a strange occurrence. But anyway, you see that? 2016, after doing all these calculations, after analyzing the data, we concluded the amount of muons does not change depending on day versus night. Interesting. Okay, we are right exactly on top of the event. We're not going into outer space to look for these things from Earth. So we are seeing the brilliance, the luminosity, the radiance that is just unmatched because we're right on top of the event. And we're seeing these streaks of white spritz. And we are seeing them actually divide the particles and create the muons, the electron neutrinos, which stays a muon, sterile muon, because it doesn't change, it's a fixed particle, never changes. The electron shower, I mean electron neutrino turns into the shower. And again, just so that you don't miss anything, this was the particle of light, which is a photon. This is the leading part, which glows and because it's being concussed, and it can get big and get small. This is the fixed particle, exactly as Don Lincoln said, and here they are, the ones that he predicted, or, or has seen. They have seen them, they just don't know where they came from. That's the key. They're digging through debris, they're just looking through trash. And they can continue to do the same thing day after day after day. This is the light particles, which is the most fundamental of all particles that exist, are the black and the white ones here. Just exactly as is seen here in Don Lincoln's article called, What's the Point? same time frame he also put out quantum foam which says all these particles exist in everywhere in the universe you can't get away from them and he's right about that except that when i see it i'm wrong <laughs>